And we're going to start, of course, with day 57 of Israel's war on Gaza. This is not the Israel Hamas war. This is Israel's war on Gaza. Since October 7th, Israel has been nonstop in its onslaught of the Palestinian people in Gaza. And even though, even though there was a ceasefire, we still saw, we still saw a tremendous amount of violence on the Gaza Strip. People were just trying to go home. People were just trying to get into their 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 buildings, and people were uh, were assaulted. And so the ceasefire was never a true ceasefire, even when Hamas honored the ceasefire. Now the hope was that this would be a four day ceasefire that would lead to a five or an eight or a twenty day ceasefire. But so far we're fifty seven days in, and Gaza is continually pelted by bombs. Ground invasions are coming uh, from my, what my sources are telling me. Uh, and the reason I say that is because right now, people in Gaza are being told to uh, evacuate certain parts of the South. Remember, they were told to leave the North and go to the South. And now they've left the, the North, they're in the South to, to great danger, great peril. And they're now being told to leave certain parts, which makes people think there's going to be a ground invasion. Now, this is part of what, uh, Israel would say is their evidence that they are a righteous army because they tell people to leave before they bomb them. And by international law, you do have to make provisions to make sure that civilians aren't targeted. But if you're in a 25 mile strip, that's only five miles wide, 25 miles long, and people have nowhere to go, telling people to evacuate. And then you bomb the area that's right next to where they evacuated to, you're not doing them that much of a favor. So it'll be interesting to see what happens now that not only are the bombs coming, but a, more ground invasions. As of now, 15,000 people, let me be very clear, 15,000 Palestinians have been killed in Israeli attacks since October 7th. 1,400 Israeli civilians were killed on October 7th. 15,000 Palestinians have been killed. 40% of that number are children. 40% of that number are children. Um, so if you're in Gaza and you're getting hit, you have no choice. Now, the talks of over the ceasefire were going back and forth, and ultimately there was a disagreement about the prisoner exchanges. And there was a disagreement about the hostage exchanges. I don't know, I don't have any more information about that yet because it hasn't been released, but we know that it's at the very least, it's a question of ratio and it's a question of quantity. Um, it's being tough. It's been tough, excuse me. Um, it's been tough for Palestinians. And Israel says it's going to continue relentlessly until Hamas is defeated. Here's the problem with that theory. Here's the problem with that logic. There are more than 30,000 Hamas fighters in the Gaza Strip. Israel maybe has killed 12 to 1300. That's based on Israel's numbers. It'd be very clear. Based on Israel's numbers, they've killed maybe 1200, 1300 Hamas fighters. Are they are they really going to kill um 18, 20, 25,000 more fighters? No. And if they do, will more come out? Absolutely. Um so what does that mean? What that means is that they never will be able to actually defeat Hamas. So defeating Hamas becomes a pretext. Defeating Hamas becomes a pretext for destroying the entire Gaza Strip. Why do I say that? Well, because as long as there's Hamas fighters, you can say, well, we have to keep going. They just won't surrender. They just won't have a truce. They just won't walk out with their hands on their heads and leave. That is impossible. Hamas is a political party. Hamas is a military faction. Hamas is a physical group. Hamas is an idea of national liberation for the Palestinian people. And so you are never going to get rid of Hamas if, if you're talking about just destroying all of them. This isn't ISIS. This isn't Obama waging war against ISIS where he said, I'm going to de destroy and degrade ISIL, whatever that meant. You can't do that with Hamas. So something's got to give. Something has to give. Because if you continue this onslaught, you will completely wipe people out. People are saying, well, the Palestinian people, the Gazans can just leave. Yeah, they could leave. 
south, maybe through the Rafah border. That means you can go to Egypt, but they can't come back. 750,000 Palestinians learned that lesson in 1948 when they left their villages, when they left their homes and have yet to be able to return. They're still fighting to return. And many of the people who left the villages in, uh, in inside of Israel ended up in places like Gaza. And so now you've made them refugees in Gaza. That's how they ended up in places like Khan Yunus or Jabalia refugee camp. And now you're saying, well, go to Egypt. Well, a lot of them already went to Egypt. A lot of them already went to Jordan. Of, half of Jordan is Palestinian. A lot of them went to places as far as Tata or, 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 or closer like Lebanon. Some went to South America. Some came to the States. But Palestinians have been in exile since 1948 precisely because of moments like this. And so when you say, well, yeah, you can leave when you know damn well you're not going to let them back. How is that not ethnic cleansing? How is that not ethnic cleansing? So that is why a new solution has to be made. A new outcome has to be determined. And it can't just be, we're going to fight to Hamas leaves. People say, well, give new leadership. What leadership? The, the Sulta? The Palestinian Authority, forgive me. The Palestinian Authority is at the current moment almost universally, let me not say that. The Palestinian Authority is not supported by the Palestinian people. They also don't have a democratic mandate. Many people feel that they're corrupt based on the latest polls. Many people don't trust them. And many people feel like they coordinate with the Israeli uh, government and that they have done little to fight the settler attacks that are happening in the West Bank. They, 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 that they've done little uh, to prevent pogroms in places like Janine. And so the Palestinian Authority can't be the answer. And whoever comes in to Gaza as the new Palestinian leadership, they cannot come in riding an Israeli tank. They cannot come in behind an Israeli tank. In other words, Israel can't wipe out Hamas and bring in leadership. There's a long history of nations, powerful nations like Israel, the United States, the UK, France, Germany, uh, et cetera, coming in and wiping people out and installing new leadership. We just saw the death of uh, Henry Kissinger who was notorious for going to places like Chile or Argentina and saying, you know what, we don't care who won the election, we're gonna put our own people in. So day 57 of the Iraq, excuse me, day 57, that's Freudian. Day 57 of Israel's attack on Gaza continues. Uh, and the answers are not forthcoming, but at some point we're going to need a diplomatic solution. We're gonna need a political solution. We cannot continue to bomb uh, Israel, um, excuse me, we cannot continue to bomb, I mean, we shouldn't bomb Israel, but we should not bomb Gaza. We cannot continue to bomb and bombard uh, Hamas uh, under the pretext of, of ending a war, when really this is not a war on Hamas at this point, this is a war on the Palestinian people and it must end immediately. But we'll keep following it. I suspect uh, tomorrow will be day 58, and I suspect in a week we'll be talking about day 64. It doesn't look like it's ending. And keep in mind, Operation Protective Edge was a 51-day war, so we're already beyond the brutality of 2014. Let's see. Um, let's see what we get. Uh, I just says, Mark, go make some coffee. I'm sorry, y'all. My brain is... I, I actually had coffee, but my... Uh, my uh, or, 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 you know, I'm wired. Uh, so my brain is moving faster than uh, my, my speech will allow. So we'll talk about that. Somebody said, what do you think is a good solution? Is power shifting to the global south? These are all great questions. By the way, uh, hit the hit the like button, um, hit the join button, and hit the subscribe button. Right now, hit the like button if you feel in this conversation, you want to keep it going. Hit the subscribe button if you want regular updates. Get the update button so you can find out whenever we post new content here on the page. And of course, hit the join button if you want um, um, hit, the, hit, the, hit the join button if you want to uh, if you want to be part of MLH family help us build this platform I'm sorry I'm reading a comment here from Riot Dogs who say incorrect is 10,000 children in total 20,000 Palestinians in Gaza not including all the maimed disfigured traumatized I'm not disputing your number family my number that, I, that I've arrived at came from the latest uh, reports that I've gotten uh, from the Gaza and health authorities that number I'm sure is going up it could be higher uh, I hope it's not. I hope I'm right and you're wrong. But if it is higher, we'll, I'll, I'll certainly uh, raise that. But um, and other people are saying the same thing. The number is closer to 20,000. I was basing mine on the latest reports from The New York Times from the Gaza health authorities. But I will uh, I will check that out, y'all. 
Uh, Israel is not part of the ICC. That's a great question um, that we should talk about before I move on to the next topic. Um, no, Israel is not part of the ICC. The ICC is the inter International uh, Criminal Court. Uh, and so because the Israel is not part of the International Criminal Court and they are not party to the Rome Statute, it, it makes it more difficult to investigate or prosecute Israel for war crimes. But it is not impossible. And I'm glad you asked that, because if you go to uh, Al Jazeera's website and you look at my interview this week, I interviewed uh, the former uh, uh, head of the ICC, the former chief prosecutor and, and, and first uh, uh, I'm going to pull up the interview now so I can send you all a link. Uh, but his name is Luis Moreno Ocampo. Uh, and he was the first prosecutor of the International Criminal Court. He's from Argentina. Uh, he had some interesting thoughts on this new Ar uh, on Malay and Argentina as well. But um, I spoke to him this week and he talked about how we can navigate the criminal court. So let me ask that question, right? Because I may post this later. So I want to make sure y'all get that. Somebody asked, Israel is not part of the ICC, right? True. The implicit question there is, can Israel be prosecuted for war crimes then? They can be investigated for war crimes because Palestine is part of the ICC. Palestine is a member of the International Criminal Court. They are party to the Rome Statute. That means that things that happen on Palestinian territory can be investigated uh, as potential war crimes. Because Israel is bombing the Palestinians in Gaza, an investigation of war crimes can happen by the ICC in, in line with international law. It can happen in Gaza. And what they can do is they can absolutely investigate Israel as well. Now, and they will be investigating Hamas and Hamas before in previous years has uh, made itself investigatable and prosecutable under international law. Something Israel has not. Something the United States has not. Something Russia has not. And so... The, the ICC is a very strong mechanism, but it's only as strong as its enforcement. And so the question isn't, can Israel be investigated or brought up on war crimes? The question is, what can you do with it? We saw that with Putin. Putin was charged with war crimes and he's going to countries and he had to scurry out. We've seen other people prosecuted for war crimes and they had to scurry out of countries where they could have been arrested. We saw that in South Africa, right, where the judge ordered the arrest of, uh, of Putin, I believe. But we've certainly seen uh, potential arrests uh, if you go to a country that is party to the ICC and the Rome Statute. So, so it, you can be arrested and investigated. But most presidents of these Western nations aren't going to places where they can be prosecuted under war crimes. But they absolutely can be charged. But it's interesting that the Western nations, the Frances, the United States, the Israels, and I'm calling them Western, yes, um, are not being investigated for war crimes. That they're not being uh, or excuse me, that they're not being charged with war crimes. The ICC for a very long time uh, was known as the ACC, the African Criminal Court, because it seemed like only African nations and African leaders were actually being prosecuted. So bringing up uh, Israel under war, for war crimes under international law and by virtue of the Rome statute for, you know, for crimes against humanity, for genocide and other things that are part of uh, the Rome Statute, which is important. And we'll talk about that. Well, I'll do a whole video on, 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 on international law and the Rome Statute. But um, uh, the answer here isn't necessarily um, to assume that Israel is going to go down swinging for criminal court. I mean, let's be honest. You know, Netanyahu is facing charges in his own country and he's managed to avoid them. You know, uh, it's been Gavir is a convicted terrorist in Israel, and he continues to, to dictate uh, the defense agenda and foreign policy of Israel. So I, I'm not optimistic. I'm not optimistic. Somebody said, uh, do you think it's now obvious now? Do you think it's obvious now that AOC and Ilhan Omar controlled opposition after the AAA resolution? I don't think that's true. I don't think that's true. I don't think Ilhan Omar or AOC are controlled opposition. I think they made a calculated political choice that I disagree with. I disagree with it. I don't think that they should have signed the resolution. Um, but um, and if people don't know, Resolution 888 effectively was a resolution ostensibly designed to uh, endorse or acknowledge Israel's right to exist uh, and, and to fight Hamas. That's not really what the resolution said. There's a whole video uh, after this conversation um, I want you to go to uh, the video library and you can see I did a whole video, a, a, a 45 or 50 minute breakdown 
of resolution 888 line by line. I'm not going to do it again tonight, um, but we'll talk about it. Salam, how can citizens help pro lobbying, pro Israel lobbying groups in Canada and the United States that are fueling this genocide? How can citizens help rid pro Israeli lobbying groups that are fueling? I don't know if we want to rid them. I think in a democracy, people have a right to have pro-Israel lobbying, group, lobbying groups. The question is, how do we create lobbying groups that fight them, that resist them? How do we organize and build our own foundation so that we can challenge uh, those who, who are undermining Palestinian freedom and rights? That's the answer for me. That's the question for me, I should say. Um, so we can talk about that later. 